Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome back to Movies A to Z Month. Now we're finally going to get to this movie. I've been waiting years to review this film. I'm finally going to do it. The first one of two films starring Bruce Willis, Matthew Perry, Amanda Peet, Natasha Henstridge, and the late Michael Clark Duncan from the year 2000, 20 years ago. The whole nine yards. In the heart of suburbia, hitman who with heart has just moved in. Let's read the synopsis. I'm really excited about this. It's a laugh out loud, sight splitting funny, uh, Louis L Luminic, New York Post. There goes the neighborhood in a pine box, not a mystery box. When hitman Jimmy the Tulip Tedeschi moves into a comfy suburb, everyone's suddenly in danger of pushing up daisies. Ugh. And it's not all Jimmy's doing either. Jonathan Lynn, my cousin Vinny director, and 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 top cast, yes, definitely, packs heat in this manic comedy about life, love, and plenty of ammo. Bruce Willis is Jimmy, who whose arrival sparks a chain of reaction in which just about everybody wants to clip somebody else. Matthew Perry plays a hapless dentist who finds a way to get on the tulips' good and bad sides. Rosanna Arquette, Michael Clark Duncan, Natasha Henshaw, Amanda Peet, and Colin and Kevin Pollack, he's also in the sequel as another character, add to the wacky and whacked fun of a laugh riot, Larry King. This is a good movie, man. I really like this film. I don't know why the critics gave it a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is hilarious compared to a lot of the comedies I've seen, especially crime comedies. I will take this any day over The Gentleman. Yeah, come at me with your comments saying, oh, that movie was a classic. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, it's a bunch of profanities in the first five minutes, and there's no, I had in laugh. And it's the same tired, racist jokes I've heard before. This movie actually has some substance. Who wrote this movie? Um, It wasn't Jonathan Lynn. He, it was um, uh, Mitchell Kapner. Yeah, he wrote the movie. He did a good job with it. Some people say it feels like a sitcom, but a sitcom if it was on HBO. That's not like Friends. Because there are things in this movie that, oh my God, you you you, you be warned, this video is going to have some uh, noises, if you will. Yeah, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything too offensive. But yes, I'm going to be making noises. Um... And yeah, uh, there's a thing in this movie that Sophie, you know, Rosanna Arquette, who does this really silly but kind of sexy uh, French-Canadian accent. But there's a difference because they give her an accent from France instead of from Canada. Because she doesn't say a boot. She's like, will we know that? And talks like that. And I'm like, it's kind of silly because it's a movie, but it's kind of sexy because I like Rosanna Arquette as an actress. And she is part French uh, descent. So that was kind of cute. At least she's trying to do something different, you know. And she's 60 now. She's still attractive to me, though. And so is Natasha Hentridge. I'm getting to the one that I'm talking about the most. But Natasha Hentridge is also a gorgeous Canadian actress. I liked her in Species. I like her in this movie. Species 2, she's there. It's good to see her again. And uh, also, I love the Ghost of Mars. Come at me. She's the most badass woman in space in a John Carpenter movie that I've seen, in my opinion. She has a good timing in the movie. You know, the... Uh, she was with Bruce Willis, and then she's with Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry's kissing her. I'm like, I don't blame you, dude. I'm heterosexual, too. And there is one line in this movie that is golden from Frankie Figgs by the late, great uh, Michael Clark Duncan. He says, and I quote, you know, I can't think of nothing finer than a fine, naked woman holding a gun. And that is who I want to talk about. The most gorgeous woman in the world that has never been in an MCU movie or a DCU movie. And that is Amanda Peet as Jill St. Clair. <clears throat> oh, my God. What a freaking woman. Oh, my God. I, I just, I, I don't even know what to say because I just rewatched this movie uh, uh, like a week ago. And this woman is willing to go all the way. And I mean all the way. Even the first time you see her. She's like answering the phone, and they're in and they're in, in in Montreal, and she's like sucking her lips. I'm like, there's something she does with her mouth to just, oh my god, you know, just it just it just drives me wild. It really does, because the thing is that you know, she's a good actress, guys. I've seen her since the movie Whipped in the year 2000, and every time I see her on screen, I light up like a candle. 
Oh, you're just a horny man that needs to get laid. Again, guys, I'm heterosexual. She's a woman. Yes, she is filled with estrogen. Jeez, she makes a movie for me. I like Bruce Willis. He has a lot of, like, comedic timing and he's not boring. But as soon as Amanda Peet, you know, starts to be invested in the in the character, yeah, she called it the G-spot of a script. And I'm like, I agree with you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, because there is a scene in this movie, I'm not kidding, like about an hour into the movie, Amanda Peet is completely in the buff, has a gun, shoots somebody, and her tits are out. And I'm like, oh, my God. Real bosoms. <laughs> Something you're never going to see in the MCU. The only movies that you get to see bosoms is like, what, Deadpool? Maybe uh, one of the X-Men films? I, I don't know. But yeah, the film was produced in Morgan Creek Productions, franchise practices. It made it, the, it grossed 13 million its opening weekend and made 106 million worldwide on a budget of 41.3. Well worth it. Here's the reception. This is what they said about this movie, even though they're, they're wrong, except for Roger Eber. He says something that I agree with. Despite a charming cast, the whole nine yards can't tickle funny bones consistently enough to distract from its sitcom-like story. Again, I like sitcoms, and the movie did make me laugh. Audience scores gave it a B. I guess they don't find an R-rated movie for a crime comedy funny. Roger Ebert gave the film one, one of the more positive reviews, noting in particular that the highlight, yes, was Amanda Peet's performance as Jill, which Ebert called perfect. Absolutely. Everything about this woman is just like, she, she's just everything I want in a woman. She, the way she talks and the way she, you know, uh, you know, projects herself to, to Matthew Perry. It's like, you got to get laid, like have sex with a woman. And she's like, Jimmy the Tulip, oh my God, I'm a, the biggest fan. And then she's like, licking her lips and and is so randy whenever you know she's like turned on by the fact that jimmy is a, is a hitman i'm like again that's my kind of woman i mean look at this face look at this face just really look at it she has a smile that can light up a room there is a scene at the end where she's all over jimmy kissing him and then she's he's kissing her on the cheek like like giving her affection i'm like i don't blame you bruce willis she's a gorgeous woman every inch of her her hair her lips, her gorgeous eyes, her smile, those bosoms, oh my god. That fair skin, the long legs, the 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 beautiful body, just her body is like is carved by angels, man. It really is. Kevin Pollack is also good in the movie. Uh, he's he's barely a, a guy in the film. He kind of dies at the end. And so does uh oh spoiler alert, yeah, he dies. And so does Michael Clark Duncan, but I do miss him. I miss his the voice and you know he's a good actor and he really brings a lot to the film there's a lot of the, what what's funny about the movie is the reactions on these actors faces it's just golden like when matthew perry is like scared out of his mind or when uh the, this guy said when, when uh harlan williams sees uh amanda Peet and he's like yeah exactly this is going to make your eyes bulge out of your eye, eye sockets especially if you're a heterosexual man because yes i was just like baffled that they just she went for it. And uh, yeah, the movie's 99 minutes long. It's very short. It goes by quick. It made me laugh. And Amanda Peet is the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Like, I, why she hasn't been in the MCU is beyond me. I don't understand it. She's 48. She's still hot to trot. The guy from Game of Thrones is a lucky man. Because she is everything. She's the whole package. Beautiful, talented, very charming. Has a lot of screen presence. Whether she has clothes on or not. I mean... Everything she does in the movie, I'm like, oh my god, you know, you, she's like Rebecca Ferguson is to me now. That's the kind of woman I want to be around, a beautiful woman who can act, that carries herself like a woman, not like I'm gonna wear a bunch of pants and be a, a a tomboy. No, they carry themselves as women. That's a hot thing for me. And uh, yeah, and there's a scene where she trips on grass and he says like she has potential and she falls. I'm like, that's a good joke. And it was for real. She really did fall on grass. But just Amanda Peet is adorable in the movie. And just every man uh, that watches this movie that's not married should gawk at her because she's just, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I just, I, I watch this movie for her because you know I love Rosanna Arquette's cute, silly accent and Natasha Henstridge. You know how I feel about her. But Amanda steals the movie. Jill St. Clair. That's a very sexy name too, by the way. 
and uh, just you know that scene just uh, it, it almost like it almost why we didn't get that in a Star Wars movie oh because it's for families they can't show bosoms you don't show anything you can't even show a girl's legs or her arms or anything you have to just show her face you know who I'm talking about at least with these women they actually show that they're women. And I love the fact that she's uh, in the film a lot. She's not just in five minutes and has forgotten. And like I said, she just gets off on, on seeing Bruce Willis, you know. Oz attributes to the softness to Jimmy falling in love, of course. He is a heterosexual man like I am. And he sees this beautiful woman with short curly hair of Jewish descent and mix. And he's like all over that. And I'm like, and in the sequel, I'll talk about Another scene that she does. See, when they have Amanda Pete, use her. Please use her. Let her show some skin. It's not going to make people run away. This isn't a porno. She's actually doing it as an artistic expression. Because if you have it, flaunt it. I'm not going to complain about it. Look at these eyes. I'm a very visual person, guys. And the fact that the movie has a good story, it's not overly complicated. It's short. It's not two and a half hours like some comedies are now. Likeable characters, no Brits to cast. I can live with that, guys. The movie's directed by a Brit. That's all you're going to get from me. I watch it for the cast and for some of the jokes and for the locations. I want to go to Canada one day because I really want to go there. I need to know I get that experience. And Amanda Pete, you are the most gorgeous actress that's never been in the MCU. Because Natalie Portman and Scarlett Johansson have been in it. And Rachel McAdams and... Evangeline Lilly and Elizabeth Olsen, but you need to be in something Marvel or DC related because I need to see more of you. Good God, you're you're the you're just. Mwah. If I met you at Comic Con or at any convention, I would tell you to sign this and say yes. Your your biggest fan, the biggest Amanda Pete fan on YouTube and Facebook, John. J Rod. She is just adorable, and she's even funny too because you know she can ha she has comedic chops and. There's a scene that my friend Levy showed me where she's like, dump the bitch. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I would dump, a man, uh, you know, freaking Rosanna Arquette any day for Natasha Hendricks or for Amanda P because you know how I feel. And Warner Brothers did this movie, so it's not going to be on Disney+. Plus. You're not going to see bosoms on Disney+. Plus. But hey, that's good enough for me. And there's not over too much profanities. There's a few of them, but it's not overly violent and has too much profanities. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's well, it still holds up. If you have not seen this movie, watch it for her, because she is going to blow your mind. She blew my mind. And the fact that the movie, you know, is 20 years old, it looks like a movie that would have came out last year. And the thing is, you know, I love the fact that Amanda Peet can show so many different, like, expressions on her face. And the way she licks her lips and puts, you know, sucks on her thumb, uh, on her fingers. I'm like, there's just something about that that just does it for me, guys. Oh, this is just an Amanda P video gushing about her. I'm like, yes, guys, it is. She's in the movie. She plays an intricate role in the film. And it's not force in there. There's no feminism. It's just her. I want to be a hitman like Virginia Tulip. And I want to, you know, bang his brains out. Again, they do that in the sequel. And uh, Amanda P deserves more. I love her in this movie. It's it's a film that works for me. It's short, sweet, great cast. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. It is worth it. This is Bruce Willis when he, when he wasn't a zombie and everything he does now. And had hair and cared about his performance. And has a beautiful woman all over him. Did we see that in Glass? No, of course not. Because the women there, like a third of them are like foreign or just don't interest me. But anyway, this movie's good. I'm finally gonna. I finally got to review it, and there are flaws. Like I said, some of the characters aren't used. Like Harlan Williams is only about two scenes. Uh, Kevin Pollock could have been in it a little bit more. Who else is in the cast? I know there were others that were like barely in the film. Stephanie Biddle knows a jazz singer, uh, and that's about it. Yeah, it's not a very big cast, but it works for what they did. It worked for me, and I'm one of the only people on YouTube that doesn't hate the sequel as well. Because Amanda Pete again, brings her, her A-game as well. I watch these movies because of her. Yeah. It's not male chauvinism, guys. It's the fact that I'm a man. 
and I know what I like. And I love this face. Love it. Just absolutely adore it. I have a whole collection of films with her because she's just adorable. And my friends would agree with me on that. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This is a breath of fresh air after sitting through Vamps. Because I hate that movie. That movie offended me. This did not. This made me laugh. And Amanda Peet is the most gorgeous creature in the world. That has not been in the MCU or DCU. Let me clarify that. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. My next review is going to be another disappointment. But at least, it, unlike Vamps, it didn't offend me as much. It just was a little overstuffed. But we'll get to that one next with the letter X. Don't worry, it's not a porno. So don't... Don't, uh, with the, when you see the title next time, you'll know it's not. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Take care.